Now, besides the micro-drilling surgery that Dr. Stedman pioneered, other techniques have been tried. The biggest one is probably what's called autologous chondrocyte implantation. In that technique, the surgeon takes a biopsy of cartilage from a healthy part of the knee, sends that to a lab at Genzyme, and they proliferate those cartilage cells in cell culture. After those cells are multiplied, the company sends the cells back to the surgeon who can perform an open incision on the knee, remove the remaining damaged cartilage in the area to be treated, and then sew a small membrane over the top of the defect. Once that's in place, the surgeon injects the cells underneath that membrane, and the hope is that it will then form cartilage. That's not the solution to a lot of these patients, though, because that doesn't work well for what's called bipolar disease. Those two membranes, if you have two, a membrane up on the femur and a membrane down on the tibia, which, by the way, is very, very difficult to do. But anyway, those two surfaces rub against each other and can just kind of fold them up, and it comes apart. The cells leak out. I think you get the picture. So it works fairly well for lesions on the femoral condyle, but not always. Uh, it does have a problem sometimes with that new cartilage delaminating from the underlying bone. And I think the reason that sometimes happens is because those cells can only become cartilage. They can't become bone and cartilage. The normal transition from bone into cartilage is a very three-dimensional interwoven uh, surface, and that provides a bonding, if you will, of the overlying cartilage to the underlying bone. With the autologous chondrocyte implantation, you have bone, and then you have cartilage, and it doesn't have the same mechanical integrity between the two layers.